Emmy, Anton's right, don't you see? His practice is losing money. Here are the figures. A country doctor never makes money. That's why I want to sell this place and move to town. I could even get an appointment to a hospital. No. Be reasonable, Emmy. I won't sell my share. Papa left it to us. When Salem was taken away, you took his share. But I won't sign and I won't sell. When it was Esther and Salem and me, we each had our equal say. You have your say. That's why we want you to agree and sign. When Salem was here... Salem, come to supper. Sammy, when Salem was here... Well, at least he was a man. He may have gotten drunk, but he ran this farm. He worked out there. Didn't just sit around in his study, reading medical pamphlets, waiting for the phone to ring. This is none of your business, Emmy. Anton is a doctor, not a farmer. And so now I'm the maid. Probably you can get a get a house. It's no use. Emmy will never agree to sell the farm. If I could have got the cash two years ago, we would be in the city now. I'm a good doctor. I was before I came out here. What you mean is, before you married me. That's not it.
Salem? But how did you... You're in... I, I thought... I've been thinking about you, Britt. I've been thinking about you for a long time. What? Oh, no, Mr. Torrance. Come on, come on. Oh, I'll be right over. Do you mind stepping out while I examine her? Was strangled. Strangled? But why? Why would anyone want to kill our Brit? Can't have been dead very long. Well, we'd better take care of your wife. And then let the police know. What are all those ties for? I don't know. I just don't know. Somebody been fooling with your bag? Emmy's been telling me to get my ties cleaned and... Damned if I don't keep forgetting. That woman. She always has to have her way. <laughs> Inspector. Found anything? Strangulation. Manual? No. These regular contusions rule out bare hands. A stocking, soft cord, or something like that, I'd say. Was she assaulted? No. Did she put up a fight? Hard to say. She was a strong girl. What's the smell? It's this chest rub she's been using. One of the popular brands, oil of peppermint. Ah. Menthol, in fact. That's it. Very funny. Very funny trick. What are you talking about? These. 
Why put them in my bag? I don't know what you're talking about. Maybe Emmy does. Emmy, Emmy, dear. So you don't know anything about my instruments? You didn't take them out of my bag and stick these in their place? I did not. Are you insane? No, but I'm sure that someone in this house is trying to make it look that way. Emmy! Shh. Em so it's Emmy. It's Emmy, isn't it? She's found out. How could she? She's acted strangely for a long time. She's watching everything, every move. She keeps bringing up Salem. Salem this, Salem that, Salem, Salem, Salem. Anton, you're upset. Calm down. Emmy couldn't know. And even if she did, she couldn't do anything about it. Oh, she could. Anton, a drunken farmhand was found killed in the yard. Salem was found guilty. The police were satisfied then, and no story of Emmy's is going to change that. The parrot could change that. Parrot? The parrot saw it all, and he heard you. What if he said, hit him, Anton, hit him, Anton? No one pays attention to what the parrot says. Emmy would pay good attention to that and make sure that the police did too. No. Emmy can't hurt us now. Oh, yes, she could, and she will try. Why take my instruments? What use has she for the morphine? Morphine? Yes, three ampoules of morphine taken out of my bag, enough to kill a man, and a hypodermic. That's easy to find out. Well, Oscar. If she is asleep, we could search her room. Emmy. <laughs> it's your paper wet.
Get me the police. Esther! Open the door! Esther! Esther! Open the door! Hit him, Anton! Hit him! Hit him! I knew it. Hit him, Anton! I knew you would say it. Anton. Anton. No use, Anton. Look at this room. You did it. You completely lost no, your mind. Listen to me. Salem was in this room. He killed Emmy. Give me the asylum. into the asylum. He got back in. What else did you expect? But if he can get out of such a place, why then go back? Salem was here. You saw him. You'd better stick to that little story. It's your only defense. Defense? What do you mean? I don't need to defend myself. Don't, don't you understand what I'm saying? Salem was in this house and he killed Emmy?
coming, coming, please. It's, it's Emmy, my sister-in-law. Where is she? She's up here in her room. We found her together. My wife, Mrs. Jenks. She went down to phone. Then I saw Salem hiding in the cupboard, almost naked. Right here was standing when I saw him. Quite mad. Quite mad to kill an innocent woman. Carl. Did you look her over, Doctor? Why, no, I saw she was dead. We didn't think it wise to touch anything. Hit with considerable violence, no motive, has to be a maniac. It must have been a great shock to you both to discover her like that. Yes, of course. And Salem was hiding in this cupboard, you say? Yes. Yeah. Oh, please. This is my uh, wife's bedroom. This is my study. Or would you mind? No, 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 of course. Go ahead. Ah, the famous tides. The famous? Uh, uh, oh, no, no. I see, Torrance has told you about them. So many things have happened that I quite forgot to mention. But my bag was rifled and a handful of ties stuffed inside. Would you explain that as the action of a sane man? They look clean enough to me. I'm sorry, clean? Oh, no, no, you misunderstood, Inspector. <laughs> I had to invent the story for Mr. Torrance. After all, everything was so embarrassing. I understand. Ties in a medical bag. <laughs> it is embarrassing. Yeah. Well, I've seen enough. Let's find my assistant and we'll be off. Right. Esther, the inspector is leaving now. I won't trouble you anymore tonight. Of course, the business of the ties reminds me. It's uh, the morphine and the hypodermic that's important. And my instruments. What happened to them? Stolen. Stolen out of my bag. What could he have done with them? Never mind. We'll check that. Try to find them. The police doctor and the ambulance will be here in a minute. Good night, Mrs. Jenks. Try and get some rest. Thank you, Inspector. Good night. I think I handled that rather well. You talk too much. What's that, sir? One of Dr. Jenks's ties. Menthol. Mm -hmm. It checks out. Traces of the same mentholated substances on the Torrance's girl's neck. Mm -hmm. No fingerprints. This material doesn't take any, the lab said. Uh. Excuse me, sir. I can't understand why you didn't arrest the doctor. He is our man. It's as clear as a bell. You're quite sure of that, aren't you, Carl? Yes. Well, yes. Obviously, the tie is the murder weapon. Well, doesn't it all point to Dr. Jenks? Yes, it does, yes. Very clearly. The strangest thing of all is his story about Salem suddenly turning up in the middle of the night and killing his own sister. The attendants at the asylum had checked, and of course Salem hadn't gotten out. <laughs> On top of that, getting back in again and neatly locking himself in his cell. Now, why would the doctor tell such a crazy story? Yes, why? Well, 
it doesn't make sense. Perhaps it makes... Perhaps it makes a little too much sense. How's that? Two murders. First case. Strangulation, weapon, silk and tie, belongs to Dr. Jenks. Second case, crushed skull, weapon, heavy paperweight, belongs to Dr. Jenks. Prime suspect, Dr. Jenks. Too neat, too obvious. Motives unknown. Possibility work of a maniac. Maybe. Maybe. But who is the maniac? Thank you for taking the time, Dr. Kemp. No trouble. But I warn you, it's quite a walk. Get out? Why, oh, yes. Very simple. If he could fly. Do you think, Inspector, anybody could get down these walls? But one of them broke out about ten years ago. That wasn't a break, Inspector. It was suicide. That is the occupational therapy room. It keeps our patients busy. He did all this? Yes, in therapy. A lot of imagination. <laughs> Just like Jack and the Beanstalk up there. Dr. Kemp, how could Salem get out of here? Yes, I thought you were going to get around to that. Well, it's quite simple, really. First, he'd have to unlock this door. But as you can see, the lock is on the outside only. And what about this letterbox arrangement? 
That is for trays, in case they're confined. But look. The panel opens from the outside. You couldn't reach through to the lock, even if it were open. And you'd have to have a key to begin with. I see. Let's assume the door's left open. <laughs> I don't like careless assumptions. Let us not base our hypotheses on my negligence. I've got to build on someone's carelessness, so whether you like it or not, I'm going to say you slipped up last night. I'm going to have that door open. Now, where would Salem go? Simple. He comes out into this corridor, and this is where he stops. Stay here. This is Dr. Kemp here. I'm on the top floor of the inspector. Please, close the doors for a moment. Thank you. It's the same in every wing, every floor. Nine o'clock, we lock up. Any empty cells, cells he might get into and force a window? Sorry, we've got a full house. And stop giving Salem the whole bunch of keys. I'll give you his door open, but I won't grant that he's got round Pop. Pop, night floor attendant this wing. That's his office. Bribed. How's that? So Pop is bribed. Yes. All right. He's very friendly with Salem. They do play chess together. Let us go so far as to say that Pop has even opened the door for him. Now, Pop has done all he can do. He can't even open the gates. Salem is on his own. Remember, it's almost 100 feet to the courtyard below. Visitor for you, Salem. Can I be alone with him? Certainly. But don't get into a game of chess with him. You will never escape. You're from the police, aren't you? I know why you've come. You're in the awkward position of trying to get information from a lunatic. I'm here to talk to you, just the same. With an eye towards reconsidering my confinement here? Possibly. I like it here. I'm safe. From who? Myself. Do you care for a game of chess? I don't play. What do you mean, yourself? If I were outside, I'd kill people. My sister Esther and her husband. And how many others? I oh, know others. Oh. Amy was always kind to me. And generous. She used to send me homemade scones. I'm sorry she had to find out. Find out what? You sure you don't play chess? Quite sure, and I haven't got all evening either. Well, neither have I. What were you sorry Emmy found out? She found out I never did murder that fellow man. How do you know? But why else would Jenks kill her? I'm not sure he did. Oh, yes, you are. You just don't know why. What about the girl, Britt Torrance? Conscience is a terrible thing. Why don't we just stop amusing ourselves and say what's on our minds? I've kept it to myself until now, haven't I? Britt's dead. So if I bring it up. I might be able to get you out of here. But I said I'd kill people. There's no policeman in the world who could stop me. What about Brit? Miss Torrance had a charming disposition, the local person said. She was very popular among the neighbors. And her father was completely heartbroken. 
so. So it would have been cruel of me to destroy her character in public. I'm not the public. I was with Britt Torrance at the time the farmhand was killed. Alone? Alone. She could have said that in court and you would have been proved innocent. Yes. I think that's the way it might have gone. You're a liar, Salem. Of course I am. There wasn't a finer girl around than Britt. I shouldn't have told you such a thing. But why didn't you tell the court? Although her father would have disowned her, I did hope that Britt would walk into court and speak up of her own accord. A failure to do so came as a, well, as a, a revelation, a letdown. Besides, they'd found my axe with my fingerprints on it and blood on the blade, motives and reasons. Didn't I drink too much? Well, you must know the story, Inspector. I don't expect you to prove what I've just said. I don't expect you to get me out of here either. I only hope it will give you a little food for thought. I understand. You expect me to believe your girlfriend finally got an attack of conscience, went to Dr. Jenks and threatened to expose everything. Something like that. Why should she go to Jenks and not the police? You're the policeman, Inspector. You tell me. Sorry. Didn't know you had a visitor. Well, that's all right, Pop. We'll have plenty of time later. I'll have a present for you. Present? Yes. Later, then. Just like being back at school. You know what we're doing up here. I had a long time to wonder about the police. I hope you still hold us in your esteem. We appreciate the patience you've shown. This is what they do to me when I talk out of turn, Inspector. How does it feel? How does it feel? No, no. I'm not going to hurt you. Don't struggle. Let me tell you something. I know a good deal of what happened over there last night. We read papers up here, see? I've been thinking a lot this morning. So let a madman give you some intelligent advice, Inspector. The next man on Dr. Jenks's list will undoubtedly be a worthless lawyer by the name of Clements. Do you know what two years of thinking has told me? Clements was paid to change my plea. Because Esther and Anton wanted a conviction. But something has gone wrong in that house now, after two years of watching each other. And they're afraid. Esther is telling Anton to kill everyone who might bring the trial into the open again. And by what preposterous evidence do you suppose they will arrange to prove that I have escaped from this place? Huh? Well, I don't know. But you'll believe whatever it is, and I'm not worried. But there's one thing I'd like to know your opinion about, Inspector. Do you really believe that anyone would ever return to this howling prison after once getting out? I'd sooner be dead. May I get up? Uh, certainly. favor, Inspector. Don't think Anton is insane. I'm the insane one. Shouldn't believe a word I've said.
Mr. Clemens isn't seeing anyone at this hour. Will you kindly tell him it's very urgent? But he's ill. He's in bed with a fever. I'm a police inspector. It's extremely important. Oh. Well, all right. Come in. You can wait in here. In the library. <coughs> Mrs. Hansen! Mrs. Hansen! <coughs> Who in the devil's ringing the bell at this late hour? It's the police, sir. Police? You've got a search warrant. No, sir. And what gives you the right to know through my belongings? Mr. Clemens, have you any reason to believe someone might want to kill you? Of course not. What kind of bald ash is this? Is what you got me out of bed for? Tell me what you want and get out. It has to do with a trial you're familiar with. The Salem murder case. I believe you changed Salem's plea from not guilty to guilty by reason of insanity. Certainly. Certainly I did. Why? Because my first duty is to my client. Because I know the difference between prison for life and experienced medical care in a mental institution. Have you ever visited the asylum? What has that got to do with it? Because if you had, I don't think you'd be drawing such a fine distinction between the two establishments. What are you driving at? Mr. Clemens, allowing for good behavior, what constitutes a life sentence in prison? 20, 25 years. And once a man has been certified criminally insane, how long do they put him away for? Until the qualified authority is convinced that his sanity has been restored. Which could mean never. Please tell me, by how much did the Jenkses increase your fee for switching? You're implying that I was bribed? Oh, I never mentioned the word. But Salem's sister and the Torrance girl have been murdered, and Dr. Jenks has made accusations against Salem. Why on earth should Jenks want to bring up Salem's name now? Everybody knows he's been put away. Because Dr. Jenks is most anxious to convince me that Salem was at his farm last night. Jenks said that? But why invent a story like that? Can't imagine. But since you had such a close understanding with him two years ago, it occurred to me that you might be able to explain his behavior. How dare you? Get out! <gasps> Get out! <laughs> I really came here to warn you to take care of yourself. And I don't mean you're cold. <laughs> Thank you for the present, Salem. It's very kind of you. But, well, well, well. That's not the strangest set of men I've ever seen. Salem, do you want to spoil my game? I can't play with all those making faces at me. Nonsense. So pull up your chair. I'm going to capture your queen tonight, Pomp. No, you're not. Oh, it's getting on for nine. Better get closed up and play through the slot. Set him up while I get my stool, and it's my turn with the white.
Don't go moving your queen prematurely, Salem. I've warned you about that before. I want to expose her. I know what I'm doing. Have it your own way. I didn't see that move. Then why kick up a fuss? Because that queen of yours keeps pointing at my knight. That's why. <laughs> I can't stand these men. Salem, I appreciate the trouble you went to, but I just can't stand them. Why don't you get your own set, then? Really too late to go changing, but I just can't play with these. That night wasn't there before. When we changed boards, you... Top, you've got to learn to be a good loser. It's checkmate in three moves, you know it, regardless of the queen. Salem, it's no good. I'm not enjoying myself. Because you're losing. It's too late anyway. It's lock-up time.
just a moment, Mrs. Hansen. It's Mr. Clements. Mrs. Hansen says he's in a bad way. Whatever it is, tell him I'm making no calls until after the funeral. It seems quite urgent. It might be wise. You should go. You're right. Tell her I'll be over right away. He'll be right over. Yes. Goodbye. You'd better forget that bird. It must have flown away. I just heard it. I tell you, I heard it! We'll look for it later, dear. It might be in the attic. Right now, I think you should get over to Clements. Mm. All right. The police, please. Mrs. Hanson, I want to talk to this man alone. Get him an extra blanket and turn up the boiler. This place is cold as a barn. <coughs> Don't bother with that stuff, Doctor. I didn't call you for doctoring. I've been going through some very interesting files, Doctor. Some of the evidence and testimony has taken on a curious light since the death of Emmy. I believe you are delirious. In fact, I'm sure you are. Yes, I'm delirious. Just like the police inspector. Yes, he was here. And I want to know what the devil you've been telling him about me. What are you talking about? I'm talking about the murder of that farm man two years ago. That's what I'm talking about. <coughs> <coughs> the murder you pinned on Salem. And now, you have the unmitigated stupidity to tell the inspector you saw him in your house. Why, fool? Who do you think's going to believe that? I did see him. He was there. What do you take the inspector for? A nincompoop? You certainly made him suspect Salem. He suspects him of having information that could send you away for life. He went to the asylum, all right. He went there and found out a lot. A lot about you and your wife. Not about me, Jinx. Why? Because I've got nothing to do with it. Never did have. And now that he's making you sweat, you better keep your mouth shut about the way I defended Salem. <coughs> the fee was not exorbitant. No <coughs> Quiet now. I'm going to take your pulse. What was all the fuss about? Mr. Clemens is delirious. He's within an inch of dabbing pneumonia. He's got to stay in bed. Will he be all right? Yes, he's recovering from a coughing attack, and I'm going to give him a sedative. 
Bring me a glass of water, please. shouldn't leave the house. If he gets restless, give me a call. Thank you, sir. And come with me into the study and I will give you a prescription and tell you what to do and also what I like him to eat during the next few days. Inspector, I'm so relieved, so terribly relieved. I was afraid he'd come back before you came. You mean the doctor's gone out? Where? I made him go on a call. It's warmer in the kitchen. I sent for you because there's something wrong with my husband. Something horribly frightening. I believe he's insane. Why do you say that, Mrs. Jenks? He actually believes he saw Salem. And you don't think he did? How could he? And now I'm afraid he's going to try to kill me. Here, sit down. Now. 
Why should he try to kill you? Why should he wish to kill your sister? There's something about Emmy no one ever knew. She and Anton, I mean. Please go on, Mrs. Jenks. Emmy introduced me to Anton. She was always getting him over here. I promise you, I had no idea they were planning to use me as soon as I married him. Use you? Are you suggesting there was something wrong at the trial two years ago? Yes. And what's more, I don't think Salem is insane, or that he ever was insane. I believe that Emmy and Anton were in this kitchen doing something, and that a farmhand came stumbling onto them, and they were forced to kill him. I believe they moved the body and put blood on Salem's axe. That's a very serious accusation, Mrs. Jenks. Here, in this kitchen. Hmm. I mean, it was scrubbed clean the night the farmhand was murdered. Shouldn't you have mentioned that at the trial? Didn't seem important at that time. I did ask Emmy about it. I remember coming in that morning, seeing the floor all scrubbed and cleaned, even under the stove. Was she upset? Not at all. She told me she hadn't been able to sleep the night before, and she got up to make herself a cup of hot milk, and, and she couldn't stand the sight of a dirty floor. Now, I wonder what they could have been up to when a farmhand barges in. Of course, it's only guesswork, and it's pretty late in the day to comment on a dead case. I don't think it is dead, Inspector. You see, Emmy and Anton hated Salem. He didn't let them do anything with the property. He didn't care about money or running things efficiently. And Anton did. Certainly. Salem was never practical. He just sat and drank, and because he was in control, all we could do was watch the profits go down the drain. Emmy didn't like it, and believe me, I didn't like it either, but Emmy took it to heart. She was a grasping woman, always arguing with Salem about selling this place while prices were high. Let's get back to this kitchen. If you ask me, somebody's been at this floor with a hatchet, and it looks burned. Exactly. Emmy handled the insurance. I see. They intended to start a fire in here, burn the place down, and collect. The farmhand came in, caught them red-handed. So Dr. Jenks goes at him with, with the hatchet. My young friend has a vivid imagination. But I think he's right. What in heaven's name is that? That's a parrot. That's another thing. Anton's been trying to kill it. Got out tonight. Emmy was killed. Anton's terrified by the bird's voice. Oh, it might not make a sound for hours. You, you know, he, he's looked through every corner of this house like a lunatic. He even gets up in the middle of the night. What's the matter? That 
clock doesn't work. It hasn't for years. The hands aren't even connected. Anton's back. He he used the front door. He's he's in the house, waiting. He, he's been listening. He he's going to kill me for Stop talking it. to you. Oh. Nobody's going to kill you. Look around, Carl. Well, the bird's been here all right. It's dirtier than a cage. It could have started it moving. No, no. Anton's back here. I know. He's back. He's not here. Where did he go? Where did he go? Clemens. An hour ago. I'm insane, mister. I'm mad. You made sure of that, didn't you? No. I didn't. It was Anton. He did all this to you. I didn't know it before it was too late. It was Anton and Emmy. I know you, Esther. I've tried to help you all these years, Salem. Try to get you out of that awful prison. But 
that Anton hates you. I understand that you want to kill him. But to kill Emmy, that was a terrible thing to do. Poor Salem. Poor Salem. I'll help you. You can still run away. Just give me the axe and run. I won't tell anyone. I always loved you, you know. Didn't I help you before? And you love me. You're my big brother. So, give it to me. Give it to me. Give it to me now. Don't be silly. Don't you understand I'm trying to help you? Give it to me now, you idiot. is empty, sir. No sign of Dr. Jenks. I've seen him hacked to pieces before, but never like this. Go away. Let him know at the station. talking about Salem. Oh, he was here again, was he? I think he killed Esther because I heard her scream and then I didn't hear anymore. So I have to be very careful. 
because he can't get out in a lodge. I think it's wise to keep all the doors locked. And how do you think he killed Mrs. Jenks? With the axe, of course. You had to use the axe to get even. To get even? Yes. We put blood on his axe. This time he had to wipe it on me. He came out to kill Esther, and now he's going back to put the blame on me. I wish I, I hadn't listened to Esther. To even think of burning this place down for the man was, was madness. And then to... to kill a person because he... he interrupted us. Hit him. Anton hit him and I... <laughs> Tell the sergeant we'll be needing statements from Jenks and Torrance. What about you? To the asylum, just as fast as I can make it.
Dr. Kemp here. Open up. I'm sorry to give you this trouble. No trouble, sir. Hey, 